Oh, you look beautiful. Thank you. How, how is your family? Everybody well? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. We're happy to be here. We're all happy to be in the same place. We've Good. We've been traveling. And uh, Paul, my husband Paul, and uh, our younger son Stellan, we're very especially happy to have because it looked like they were maybe going to be spending tonight in a uh, French prison. <clears throat> really? Yeah. Really, a French yeah, they person. had a little bit of an episode in the in the airport last night. I'm sorry, I'm gonna take a sip of water. No kidding. Um, where, where where in France did this take place? They were in Nice, mm -hmm. and they were coming home, and uh, they got to the airport, went to passport control, and Stellan has an American passport, and Paul has a British passport. So, uh, and P Stellan's photo was taken when he was about a week old, mm -hmm. but he's now three years old, like right. your son. Sure. So it's completely unrecognizable. So they went up, they marched up to passport control, and Stellan announces, I'm Luke. And uh, the woman at passport control goes, Excuse me, I'm Luke. <laughs> and uh, she goes, Hang on a minute. And she brings someone else over. And uh, they ask again, Do, well, is, Who is this person? Is this your father? And he goes, No, that's not my daddy. And uh, then they call the police, and the police come over. Oh, my. And, um, and they said, well, who is this man? What is this man's name? And he says, Darth, that's Darth Vader. <clears throat> and it so happened that they got, were like the, probably the only three people in the world who hadn't seen Star Wars. So this went on for a little while before someone finally figured it out and went, <gasps> yes, Darth Vader got it, got it. And, uh, oh my God. and they let him go. And they asked him also where he lived. And he said, I live in Return of the Fick. Uh. Which is uh, how he says Revenge of the Sith. I live in Return, Return of the, the Fick, Fick, which is in Brooklyn, uh, evidently. That'd be great, calling yeah. it in. Yeah, we've locked up Darth yeah. Vader. Yeah. So I think they confiscated his, uh, his uh, lightsaber as well. He had and, a little plastic lightsaber. Where are they now? Did they get out of your... They're home, so oh, that's well, why we're all very happy to be in New York. And thank you very much. Wow. I'm very happy to be home. And uh, the, the, the movie uh, uh, Blood Diamond, that was filmed in Africa, correct? That was in Africa, mm -hmm. yeah. We How long were you there? About four months. What part three of Africa? And a half, four months. Southern Africa. We, uh, we filmed in South Africa and Mozambique. Mm -hmm. And we got to travel. I had my family there with me as well. And uh, it was such a privilege. We got to travel, went on safari, went to Botswana. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you uh, live in, uh, do they have like, a, are you in a hotel? Are you in tents? Are you in a combination of both? Well, when I was... Portable storage units? Yeah, well... <laughs> when, uh... <laughs> um, when we were shooting, I was staying, we stayed in the house because I had the, the whole circus, the whole gang there mm -hmm. with us. Um, but we went on safari and then we stayed in some hotels and... We went to this, the first place we went on safari was an incredible place. It was called Singita. It was in South Africa, in the Kruger Park, and they have these like um, apartment, sort of like apartments, all glass windows overlooking the wilderness. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and they had um, it's where we actually encountered our first wildlife was actually in the apartment. Um, in, in the where you yeah, living? Yeah, we uh, we had, there was a glass, there was a, a balcony and a glass sliding door, which when we checked in, they made sure to tell us about five times that we should keep, keep it close. close. <laughs> and uh, it became the subject of a quite heated debate between my husband and I as to who actually was the one to have left it open. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we went for literally about half an hour to the swimming pool with the kids. And I came back to get some stuff, some towels and stuff, and found, looked through the plate glass window, and found a five foot tall baboon on the bed, eating a chocolate bar, <laughs> just sitting on the bed, and his buddy was bouncing up and down on the couch, and other guys like swimming from, from the curtains and that kind of thing. Comple I ran screaming, which they said is a thing not to do, uh, if you find baboons in your room, And, and what, what, what do you do when you find baboons? You get, you get the park rangers, and they, and they come, and you you go back and they, you know, they take care of everything. And and, and, uh, but how do they get them out? Do they coax them out? Do they have to put nets on them? Or what? how do they, they get them out? They wouldn't quite let us near when they did that. They mm -hmm. told us to stay away. But I did get enough of a peek to see that they, uh, it transpired they had completely drained the mini bar. I mean, literally, <laughs> like, completely drained it. They, wow. they had just trashed the room entirely. <laughs> so as it turns out, Baboons are kind of like at the same evolutionary <laughs> stage as a lot of the actors that work with, you know. Green minibar, footprints on the wall, you know. How about nuts. that? Yeah. I mean, 
but it was a huge, huge, huge party. Huge party. Now this this um, um, uh, motion picture it has a uh, uh, a very um, provocative title, Blood Diamond. I mean, yes. it, it sounds uh, exotic and mysterious and, and dangerous. And in fact, it's, uh, it, it couldn't be a, a more gritty depiction of uh, true life uh, struggles in Africa. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, um, I think, a very accurate representation of what happened in Sierra Leone uh, in the 1990s in the Civil War there. And Blood Diamonds refers to conflict diamonds, which are still an issue today which are basically diamonds that are uh, used to, uh, that directly fund armed conflict. Uh, so the film, it's, you know, I thought it was really powerful because it's, I think it works well as, a, as an action film. It's a really good action film, I think. It's a very moving drama. And at the same time, it, uh, you know, it talks about these issues. Mm -hmm. It sheds light on very these issues. Very intense. And, and uh, a thing that I was not aware of was uh, uh, young uh, kids, 12-year-old kids, uh, being, uh, uh, I guess, uh, brainwashed or uh, pressed into uh, revolutionary action and uh, serving in armed conflict and on and on. Yeah, it seems um, the recent numbers I've seen are about 300,000 children around the world today engaged in armed conflict, mm. which is astounding. The uh, scene we're going to take a look at here is uh, what, Jennifer? It's uh, the scene we're going to look at is uh, I'm in a classroom. I play a journalist. My name's Maddie Bowen. I'm I'm a real feisty kind of determined to make a difference and expose this whole thing and affect some positive change. And it's me and Leonardo DiCaprio who plays a sort of ex mercenary diamond smuggler, um, and we're sort of trying to. Uh, I'm expressing my frustration, trying to accomplish what I want to, and his. Let's take a look. So right here I've got dead mothers, I've got severed limbs, but it's nothing new. And it might be enough to make some people cry if they read it, maybe even write a check. But it's not going to be enough to make it stop. People back home wouldn't buy a ring if they knew it cost someone else their hand. But I can't write that story until I find someone who will go on record. So if that is not you, and you're not really going to help me, then why don't you get out of my face? And let me do my work. There you go. It opens December 8th, Blood Diamond. Jennifer, I'm glad your family Thank is you. back together. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Enjoy the holiday Thank season. You. Jennifer Connolly, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Tom Greeson.